book of Romans now. And uh, we've been looking at a series in Romans uh, that are called Practicing Righteousness. Practicing Righteousness, and it's primarily uh, from Romans chapters 12 to 15. Because really I thought it was important that uh, during these days that we're living where there's so much going on all around us, that we as believers in the Messiah, we as followers of Yeshua, need to be living our faith out in this world. We need to be living and practicing righteousness in the world around us. And that's what all these uh, chapters are all about. They are part of Rabbi Shaul, the Apostle Paul's teaching to the believers in the city of Rome. And uh, I've had the joy with Louise and also uh, our daughter to go to Rome and, uh, and also hear about the history of the Jewish community in Rome and the early believing community there too. And there was quite a vibrant community in Rome. And so Rabbi Shaul writes to the Romans and in his writing in the book of Romans, the first really 11 chapters of the book of Romans is all about theology, all about what God has done for us through Yeshua the Messiah, all what God has done for Israel and for the nations in bringing uh, the righteousness through Yeshua the Messiah. Then in chapters 12 to 15, it's all about how we live out our faith. At the end of the day, if you don't live out our faith, well then, uh, the doctrine is, uh, is really not so uh, vital, not so important. Doctrine is meant to be lived. Doctrine in the Bible is not for us just to know, it's for us to do. So we live out our faith, and that's how people know what the truth is. And so it's my hope and expectation that during these days we'll be great witnesses for the Lord as we face all these challenges around the COVID-19 pandemic and, uh, uh, and all, all these the, the kind of things that have happened as a result of the pandemic. I've been truly challenged by the Word of God. Every time I prepare a message from the Word of God, I can tell you that I'm preaching to myself first and foremost. And then I hope that you too have been challenged about the way that you live in your lives as well as we look into the Word of God. So we've been challenged by Rabbi Shaul up to this point to practice righteousness that we've received as a gift from God through Yeshua, our Messiah. And so just looking back a little bit, back in chapter 12, verses 1 to 2, Rabbi Shaul told us that we need to put ourselves on the altar. That is, we have to be the sacrifice on the altar. We are to be living sacrifices. That is a foundational call for each one of us. You can't do anything else. None of these things that he's told us to do can actually be done unless you first put yourself on on the altar. In the days gone by, of course, uh, in the time of the temple, there were sacrifices made. They were killed and sacrificed. We are living sacrifices. That is our first and foremost un, uh, obligation that undergirds everything else we do. Then in verses 3 to 8 of chapter 12, we were taught about serving our Messiah. I think I have this on text uh, on the screen. Serve our Messiah with the gifts that God has given us. Serving our Messiah. And uh, we all have special gifts. God has gifted each one of us with spiritual gifts that we are to use to bless the body of Messiah. We're also told in chapter 12, 9 to 21, to serve our Messiah in all our social relationships. I think we counted 23 admonitions, 23 uh, exhortations, commands for us to do in our social relationships. Look back in chapter 12, verse 9 to 21 for all those. Then we were told to serve our Messiah in relation to authority. This was the most popular, of course, of submission to, the, to our governing authorities. Everyone loved that subject a whole lot. Uh, chapter 13, verses 1 to 7. Then it was about keeping the most important commandment, the Shema, loving one another, not to owe anybody anything other than to love them. Wow, what a, what a great uh, commandment and reflects Yeshua's commandment to us as well. Then last time, we looked at uh, chapter 13, 11 to 14, which was about uh, watch out, wake up, the Messiah is on his way. Messiah is on his way, therefore we better be living lives that are pleasing to him and put away all these things that so easily 
dis distract us. And that was uh, a message that, we, that I delivered in, in December. And uh, now we're coming back to a new section in the book of Romans. And we are in chapter 14 now, and we're going to do chapter 14 and 15 over the next few weeks. And in this section, we're, all ta we're taught about principles on how to maintain unity in our community. Principles on how we maintain unity in community. So we're going to look at uh, verses 1 to 12 today. Do not judge one another. Number two, do not offend one another. Number three, live in harmony with one another because we're all followers of the Messiah. And then the uh, fourth section in chapter 15, verses 8 to 13 is the Messiah, the hope for Jew and Gentile. And that's why we're here. We, we shouldn't be here, I guess, for, for any other reason other than if we're inquiring and we're looking and we're searching, we're trying to find the answers about life and about Messiah. But the fact that we know as believers that he is our hope for Jew and Gentile. So let's look at verses 1 to 12 of chapter 14 about do not judge one another. But before I read the scripture, I wonder if uh, you've heard about uh, the saying. We've all heard the saying, I'm sure, where there are two Jews, there are three opinions. Well, I think that's probably a gross understatement. It's probably about five or six opinions. But once upon a time, there were two Jewish men who found themselves stranded on an island, deserted island, all by themselves. They found a way, of course, to feed themselves uh, from the island. No shellfish, of course. But uh, they did find water to drink, and they provided for themselves. And uh, they made a life for themselves on the island. One day, a ship came to rescue them, and they, of course, were completely overjoyed. And the captain of the ship came ashore to inspect the island to see how they had been living. And he found that they had built three synagogues. So the captain said to, to them, he said, why did you build three synagogues when there's only two of you on the island? Well, the one man said, well, that synagogue is for me, that synagogue is for him, and that third synagogue is where we both don't want to go. There has to be that option as well. And so that's what it's like. There's always a multitude of opinions, and we have a very unique congregation. We have a very unique community, uh, even more so than most other communities. We have Jews and Gentiles worshiping together. We all come from very diverse ethnicities and spiritual backgrounds. And uh, I want to tell you that the, the unity in our community is a weekly miracle. Every week, God does a miracle for us as he brings us together in unity. I believe it's because we have made Yeshua Lord of our lives and that we are focusing on him. And that's what we always need to keep on doing. However, today, we really are facing unprecedented challenges due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And there are many fiercely held opinions and differences of opinions that people have in regards to health issues, in regards to vaccines and vaccine mandates, wearing of masks, and on social and political issues. On top of that, there's a large number of conspiracy theories that of course just adds to the mix and has created a lot of fear and uncertainty. So how do we keep the unity in our community? Rabbi Shaul has something to say about that. Today we'll look at this first principle, do not judge. Let's read ver verses 1 to 12. Now, accept the one who is weak in faith, but not for the purpose of disputes about opinions. One person has faith to eat anything, but the weak eats only vegetables. Don't let the one who eats disparage the one who does not eat. And don't let the one who does not eat judge the one who eats. For God has accepted him. Who are you to judge another, judge another servant? Before his own master he stands or falls. Yes, he shall stand, for the Lord shall make him stand. 
One person esteems one day over another, while another judges every day alike. Let each be fully convinced in his own mind. The one who observes that day does so to the Lord. The one who eats, eats to the Lord, for he gives thanks to God. And the one who abstains, abstains to the Lord, and he gives thanks to God. For none of us lives for himself, and none of us dies for himself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For this reason, Messiah died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. But you, why do you judge your brother? Or you too, why do you look down on your brother? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says Adonai, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Wow, the word of God is very powerful, isn't it? And Rabbi Shul, the Apostle Paul, uh, wrote this to the believers in Rome under the inspiration of the Ruach HaKodesh. What was actually going on in their community at this time that prompted Rabbi Shul to write to them? Well, remember that the believing community in Rome was very much like our community here. It was made, made up of Jews and Gentiles together. They had different ethnic backgrounds. They had different cultural backgrounds and practices. They must have also had very different political opinions and backgrounds. On top of this, the believers in Rome also had different levels of spiritual maturity. That's why Rabbi Shaul uh, refers to those who are weak in faith and also therefore implies that they are those who are strong in faith. So let's look again at verses 1 to 4. Do not judge about food. Now except the one who is weak in faith, but not for the purpose of disputes about opinions, one person has faith to eat anything, but the weak eats only vegetables. Don't let the one who eats disparage the one who does not eat. And don't let the one who does not eat judge the one who eats. For God has accepted him. Who are you to judge another servant? Before his own master he stands or falls. Yes, he shall stand, for the Lord is able to make him stand. So in this context, the ones who were weak in faith who were the ones who were vegetarians. No judgment on anyone here who are vegetarians, for whatever reason. But this is uh, what it looks like in the context. Uh, the ones who were vegetarians were considered in this context weak in faith. It could have been that some folks didn't want to eat meat because the meat was first sacrificed to idols, as mentioned also in the book of Corinthians. And so it seems that, uh, in, and it's true, that in Corinth and in Rome and other cities, there was this uh, practice that meat was first offered in honor of the gods. Think of the Roman pagan society, Greek god as, as well. The meat was first offered to the gods, and then the surplus was then sold in the markets. And that would provide an income for the priests and also pay for the temple, that, uh, the temples, the pagan temples. Now I wonder if these so-called gods ever ate the food. I think not. And you would wonder why the priests, or the people for that matter, wouldn't wise up to this fact that there was always food left over. And then, of course, they would take it uh, to the uh, market to sell. So, of course, why didn't they wise up that idols of stone and wood can't eat? But anyhow, the other possible reason that some believers didn't eat meat was perhaps because the meat wasn't kosher. That is possible. Uh, that, therefore, those who are referred to as the weaker brothers, the weaker people, are the Jewish believers, the Messianic Jews in the Messiah. Perhaps that is true. We don't know exactly. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter why some people were vegetarians. Whether it was because meat was offered to idols, or if it wasn't kosher, the issue that Rabbi Shul raises is that we should not quarrel about these disputable matters. He says that we must 
except the one who is weak in faith. The word accept means to keep on taking to yourself. It's a continuous tense. Keep on taking to yourself, as some translations have it, welcome that person. Keep on welcoming them. We are to welcome people who have different opinions on which the Bible is silent or unclear about. We are to welcome them without quarreling. It says in verse 2, One person has faith to eat anything, but the weak eats only vegetables. Folks, I don't want to go into a theological discussion about Jewish dietary requirements for Jews and whether they apply to Gentiles or not. That would really certainly be a red herring. Forgive the pun. But one person, whether they be Jewish or Gentile, has the faith to eat anything, whether it is offered to idols or whether it is unkosher, and another person, whether they be Jewish or not, eats only vegetables. The key that Rabbi Shaul gives us is in verse 3. Do not let the one who eats disparage the one who does not eat. And don't let the one who eat, uh, doesn't eat judge the one who eats, for God has accepted him. So the one who chooses to eat meat must not disparage. That word means not to look down on, not to despise, not to reject with contempt the person who abstains from meat. And in turn, the one who abstains must not judge or condemn the one who eats. Why? Because God has accepted them both and has welcomed them both. Those who eat and those who abstain, those with stronger faith and those with weaker faith. Basically, we are not to judge one another because each one of us answers directly to the Lord. He is our master. He says there in verse 4, Who are you to judge another's servant? As believers, each one of our of us are servants of the Lord, and the, the word here is speaking of a domestic servant, not a slave, a domestic servant. The idea here is that you cannot judge another person's employee. They answer to their employer, not you. And God is our heavenly employer, and, and it's before Him that we stand or fall. But because of our faith in Yeshua the Messiah, we shall certainly stand. He will make us to stand. And so Rabbi Shaul includes different opinions regarding also special days. So in verses 5 to 8, it talks about some special days. One person esteems one day over another, while another judges every day alike. Let each be fully convinced in his own mind. The one who observes that day does so to the Lord. The one who eats, eats to the Lord. For he gives thanks to God, and the one who abstains, abstains to the Lord, and he gives thanks to God. For none of you, none of us lives for himself, none dies for himself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Can you imagine the differences of opinions that existed in the community in Rome? Uh, when it came to issues about Sabbath observances or special Chagim holy days that Jewish believers kept, whereas those who had come from Gentile backgrounds did not keep. It's also possible that there were other observances that became part of the believing community in Rome about fasting days or days of celebration. But the principle here is that each person has to be fully convinced in their own mind about the rightfulness of these things. Don't try and convince others what you hold as your convictions. Be convinced in your own heart and then live them out according to your relationship with the Lord. The key phrase here is what I try to emphasize when I read it was, the one who observes does so to the Lord. The one who eats does so to the Lord. The one who abstains does so to the Lord, and we live and die to the Lord. The overriding principle is that our motivation must be always to honor the Lord in everything that we are doing. Each one of us must conduct our lives with the constant awareness of God's presence. At the end of the day, we are to seek God's approval over anybody else's approval. Dear friends, this is how we are to maintain unity in our community. 
at Beit HaMashiach. We all have different opinions, different opinions on many different issues. However, I've constantly said to people that they need to be convinced in their own minds to follow their own convictions and stop trying to convict others of what they believe especially when it comes to things like dietary laws, Sabbath observances, and other matters that are not prohibited in Scripture, clearly. I believe that the Brit Chadashah, the New Covenant, the New Covenant Scriptures, does contain within it what we might call Messianic Halakha, that is, a Messianic way in which to walk as a believer. There is, of course, a lot about how we should conduct our lives in the New Testament, but I think that any attempt by any group of people to codify that and then enforce it in the community will always fail and lead to legalism in the end. So at the end of the day, the Lord is our judge and master. We live for the Lord. We are accountable to Him in every areas of our lives. We need to, be, we need to constantly attempt to please Him in everything we do. We rise and fall on His judgment, of course, of us, as Rabbi Shul tells us. For none of us lives for Himself, and none dies for Himself. For we, if we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Then he speaks about the theological basis of our unity and the theological basis of not judging one another in verses 9 to 12. You notice how I read the scripture a few times in my sermons. I always read the scripture completely, then I go over each portion. I do that on purpose, because hearing the word of God is uh, how the Holy Spirit teaches us. So the word of God is much more important than my words, so we always try to read the scriptures as much as we can. For this reason, Messiah died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. But you, why do you judge your brother? Or you too, why do you look down on your brother? For we all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says Adonai, every knee shall bow to me, every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each one of us shall give account of himself to God. So the reason for the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Messiah was that he could be both the Lord of the dead and the living. Yeshua is Lord of all. And because he is Lord of all, he is the one who will judge each one of us. And that's precisely why we have to refrain from judging others. Do not be a judge Judy, but leave the judgment to God. Rabbi Shaul says, but you, why do you judge your brother? Or you too, why do you look down on your brother? So there he speaks about the weak brother first, and then the stronger uh, one, strong in faith, second. The judgment seat. We all will stand before the judgment seat of God. This is a Greek word for judgment seat is bima. You might recognize that word. It was taken into the Hebrew language as well. The bima is the platform from which uh, the services are conducted in a synagogue or in the old days the raised platform for the reading of Torah. The judgment seat is the bima. And it's a platform from which the Lord will review and evaluate all the ministry that we have done, all the ministry that we have ever done in our lives, all the service to the Lord in our lives. Think about that for a moment. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, it says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Messiah, so that each one may receive what is due for the things that he did while in the body, whether good or bad. This is a judgment for all of us who are believers. We will all stand before the Lord. This includes Rabbi Shaul and all of us who claim Yeshua as Messiah. This is not a judgment in regards to our salvation, for our eternal security is already established through our faith in Yeshua the Messiah. So this is not whether we'll be saved or not. It's not about salvation, but this is a judgment where... Everything that we have done in the name of the Lord, everything we've done to serve God will be judged. All our works will be judged. What we have done for the Lord will be under review. And according to also 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 4 to 5, some of our works might be burnt up in the fire. And 
others may remain and we will be re rewarded for that. So I guess we can only imagine what that may be like. The good news is that we're all saved through faith in Yeshua the Messiah. Some of the works we do may be burnt up. Who knows? It might have been done for your own personal motivation uh, and not for the Lord. And only He knows. But at the end of the day, some will be burnt, some will remain. And what remains will be uh, the evidence that will uh, affect our reward. And only the Lord knows these things. The bottom line is, so then, each one of you shall give an account of himself to God, in verse 12. So because of all these things we've looked at in the scripture, we can draw some very important principles on how we conduct our lives and how we can maintain unity in our community. I think it's not difficult for us to see how these principles can be applied to our lives, not only how we relate to one another, but also uh, in the context of us all working through the issues relating to the COVID-19 pandemic. If you're vaccinated, do not look down on those who have decided not to be vaccinated. If you're unvaccinated, do not judge those who are vaccinated and vice versa. If you wear a mask, don't judge those who have an exemption and are not wearing a mask. If you wear a mask, don't look down on those who do. And, you know, I've had that. I've worn a mask and people come to me and say, why are you wearing a mask? Don't you have enough faith? <laughs> yeah, maybe I don't. So I'm going to wear a mask because there's reasons for me to do so. But, you know, people say stupid things like that. So we need to be very careful. In fact, as Rabbi Shul goes on to say, in the forthcoming verses, don't put a stumbling block or a trap in the way of fellow believers. Don't cause your brethren to stumble, is the, uh, is the command to all of us. Consider their position. <clears throat> Consider the position of others. And then walk according to the rule of love. Put in other people's needs above yourself. That's so important. If we do this, if we don't pass judgment on one another, but allow the Lord to be Lord of all and judge of all, we will then remain and maintain unity in our community. <clears throat> Rabbi Shol, uh, told the Corinthian believers, separate scripture written by Rabbi Shol as well to the Corinthians, he said, everything is permitted, but not everything is helpful. Everything is permitted, but not everything builds up. Let no one seek his own good, but the good of his neighbor. Can you see how this is the Shema? The outworking of the Shema. But not everything is helpful. So everything is permitted, you can do anything. But is it really helpful? Will it maintain unity in the Messiah? Everything is permitted, but not everything is good for edifying others. So we need to be careful of what we do. And a little later in the chapter, he said in verse 31 of chapter 10 of 1 Corinthians, he said, Therefore, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. <clears throat> Give no offense either to Jewish or Greek people, i.e. Gentiles, or to God's community. Just as I, just as I also try to please every, everyone in everything. This is Rabbi Shaul speaking. He tried to please everyone. He first pleased the Lord, then he tried to please everyone in everything. Not seeking my own benefit, but the benefit of many. Why? So that they may be saved. It's for the sake of our witness to the community around us that we need to keep the unity in our community. It's for the sake of our witness who are not yet, to those who are not yet believers that it behooves us to keep unity in our community. Remember that Yeshua said, they will know you, they will know that you are my disciples by the way that you have love one for another. So dear friends, our testimony is at stake in these days. It's precisely during these times that we are to conduct ourselves in a way that is a witness to those around us, to the Jewish community first, 
and also to everybody else. That's our calling. So let's practice righteousness in our community. Let us have unity in our community and let us not judge one another. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much uh, for these scriptures written uh, thousands of years ago, 2,000 years ago. And here we are, Lord, you're still speaking to us through your word because your Ruach HaKodesh inspired these words from Rabbi Shaul and your Holy Spirit continues to challenge us now even as we follow you in this world. So help us to apply these truths to our lives and help us to love one another deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. So Lord, bless us today, we pray. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Okay, thanks everyone. Let's uh, rise and uh, thank